Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the One Heritage Group PLC full year results investor presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab that's just situated on the right hand corner of your screen. Please just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all of the questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I would like to submit the following poll, and if you could give that your kind attention, I'm sure the company would be most grateful. And I'd now like to hand you over to CEO, Jason Upton. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, and thank you for attending our annual results presentation for the period to 30th of June 2022. I'm Jason Upton, CEO of One Heritage Group, and Anthony Unsworth, our CFO, joins me today to run through our presentation. Uh, we are going to start by turning our cameras off whilst we run through the presentation. Um, but we'll be back on to answer any questions afterwards. So moving straight on, a reminder, and for those that are new to us, we are a residential property development and management company, uh, and we focus on developing high quality self-contained apartments, both refurbishments and new build property, along with the development of co-living accommodation, all primarily in the north of England. Our services within the group include acting as development manager for third party owned developments, property management and property sourcing. And we achieved our listing status in December 2020. So now approach our two year anniversary on the main market of the London Stock Exchange. And there have been five strategic priorities in place over the last 18 months, all of which have seen positive progress. Firstly, uh, delivering our development projects has been our primary focus, which has been challenging against the backdrop of wider industry pressures, such as an increase in construction costs. Um, but delighted to have completed our first development in August of this year, which is now fully occupied. Uh, and we're expecting a further three developments reach completion within the next six to eight months. Uh, the sales of these properties have been a focus uh, to secure reservations for properties under construction. And more recently, following the completion of our first development, legal completion of sales, um, we're continuing to see strong demand for our property and I'll uh, share an update on progress later on. Our third priority, property services, which has undergone a restructure, has seen progress and, and positive performance. Uh, we did announce last year the liquidation of two companies, One Heritage Maintenance and One Heritage Design, uh, part of One Heritage Complete which the group owned the 47% stake in. Um, following a strategic review, these, um, these same services we brought in-house are now provided by One Heritage Property Services and One Heritage Construction. And more recently, post year end in July of this year, we agreed to sell our 47% share in One Heritage Complete an initial 42,500 after legal fees, which could see us generate a further 200,000 pounds if certain performance milestones are achieved. And with our first development complete uh, and developments expecting to finish in the first half of next year, adding to our property services workload, along with ongoing co-living activity, uh, new additions have been needed to add to our already uh, dynamic team. Uh, this has seen Anthony Unsworth join as a CFO, replacing our departing finance director, our financial controller, a head of residential lettings, head of projects, and more recently an acquisitions lead as we've seen growth in all business areas and prepare for the forthcoming period. And finally, with developments completing, uh, it's essential for us to find the right opportunities to replace these. Uh, we acquired a development in Stockport over the period and have seen some diversification with an acquisition of lands to build new build houses in West Yorkshire more recently. So to recap our strategy, uh, we have three core elements. Firstly, we are a residential property developer. We acquire development sites within the group, that are both new build projects or the redevelopment of existing buildings, such as offices, which we convert into self-contained apartments. Our geographical focus continues to be the north of England, uh, primarily in city and town centres with high demand from working professionals with good transport links. And these areas tend to have similar characteristics in terms of values and expected economic growth, which we can also see across areas of the Midlands, which we continue to monitor. Uh, we're 
we're targeting development projects that contain up to 100 units, uh, which benefit from shorter construction timeframes, such as 12 to 18 months, to maximize the return on capital deployed and reduce the risk associated with long construction timeframes. And seven development sites are owned by the group, uh, one completed, which is our largest at 88 apartments, with three more to follow next year and three yet to start, uh, start construction. Secondly, we act as development manager for schemes owned by a third party. We have four projects under a development management agreement, having earlier this year signed a new agreement to deliver 129 unit development in Manchester city centre. Um, and these agreements generate regular monthly income for the group and a profit share upon completion. Additionally, they also offer further growth opportunities for property services company in the future uh, to take on the management of these completed units. And finally, the third core element of our strategy, our strategy includes property services, which include co-living, construction and property management. As mentioned earlier, our property services were previously provided by One Heritage Complete, an, associ uh, an associated group of companies we held a 47% share of. But due to the liquidation of two of these companies, uh, we restructured our property services by bringing them fully in-house and disposing of our 47% share of One Heritage Complete, which included a letting in cleaning company. A new agreement was signed at the start this year, which secures core sources of revenue for co-living, and we're expecting further growth in this area, um, this area in particular over the forthcoming period. Our property management primarily covers lettings, which generates regular management fees from rent collected. And these three core strategies provide a good balance, a full cradle to grave approach for our investors. The success of our model is dependent on our clear understanding of what our end purchasers want, our deep knowledge of the market and ability to deliver. Uh, this is then followed by good long term rental potential and a headache free property management service. Uh, revenues generated uh, from our development's prof uh, development profits as developer supported by fees generated from development management projects uh, and our services which themselves should bring strong long-term income and these revenues provide a balance to the level of equity tied up in our developments and what we also believe gives us a competitive advantage against other developers is our wider network in hong kong and asia uh, which we're demonstrating by securing strong reservations of properties currently under construction uh, this network's mainly through our majority shareholder, One Heritage Property Development, who are based in Hong Kong and provide the UK group with a key sales and marketing function, providing the ability to maximise returns quicker by selling overseas. And having a presence and infrastructure in the Far East we can access, who understand the cultural differences to effectively market and sell our property, brings significant benefits as we look to secure sales to de-risk our developments. And this slide outlines the seven developments we have in the group. Our largest development, Lincoln House in Bolton, completed in August, which was post year end. This saw the conversion of a former office, uh, part built office building into 88, 88 apartments. Uh, construction had seen some delays. Uh, we did expect it to be finished earlier this year, but there were some unforeseen uh, challenges. But overall, we're, we're delighted to have this now completed and fully occupied. Uh, this now leads three developments under construction, uh, all progressing well despite construction delays and all now expected to complete in the first half of next year. Bank Street in Sheffield has had its challenges, having had a fixed price build contract in place to deliver. Um, we had to cancel this towards the end of last year due to poor contract performance and subsequently complete the remaining works ourselves in-house through One Heritage Construction. And the increasing costs following this, uh, as a result of redoing some of the work the previous contracts have completed um, and rising material prices, has unfortunately led to the impairment of this asset. And St. Peter's Gate had similar challenges. Uh, we had difficulty securing a build contract last year and considering the construction team had in place to finish Bank Street at the time, made a decision to complete the refurbishment works in-house ourselves. And as we have pre-sold the full development at this point, um, there were time pressures for us, which also influenced our decision. Um, but despite a full cost analysis, uh, we didn't have the security of a fixed price bill contract and the development has been impacted by rising material prices, uh, again, resulting in, in an impairment. 
the lessons have been learned uh, from these developments. Uh, sales were secured too soon, and the exposure of no fixed price build contract has increased costs beyond our control. Our Oscar House, we do have a, a build contract in place. Good progress has been made. Uh, the contractor on site has had their challenges due to rising costs, um, and there's been some design changes to enhance fire safety in particular. Um, this has extended the construction program, but completion is due early 2023. Of the developments, we haven't started construction. Seaton House has a, play, a pending planning application, which we expect a decision on later in the year. Churchgate has recently had planning approved, and Victoria Road, our first new build housing development, was recently acquired a few months ago with the benefit of planning approval, and it's in its early stages. Um, on all three unstarted developments, it's important we consider the challenges the industry faces uh, in relation to rising costs along with the lessons learned on our active developments. Sales have not yet started, and we expect to spend more time on procurement and design prior to starting works. Um, this may see us start construction later than expected, uh, but should offer some extra assurances to prevent rising costs and delays later on in the process. Our development management projects um, have been added to over the period, most recently signing an agreement to deliver one Victoria in Manchester. Uh, we're expecting the former Oldham County Court to be completed early next year, our first completed development management project. Uh, this project will provide 42 affordable homes in Oldham, and we're delighted to have worked with the Housing Association, Archon Housing, to deliver this project. Uh, the other projects are at various stages. Uh, North Church House in Sheffield isn't expected to finish until late next year. Uh, and we're in a pre-construction service agreement with a principal contractor on both One Victoria and One Heritage Tower to provide cost certainty prior to committing contractually to the construction works on these projects. Um, but overall, we're, we're pleased to have secured these additional sources of revenue for the group, uh, providing us with regular monthly income and a profit share upon completion. Our sales overall have performed relatively well, uh, despite us opting to switch from a bulk purchase at Lincoln House um, a few months ago. Um, this is a result of them failing to commit contractually to 47 units, uh, but following a revaluation and considering the development was nearing completion at the time, um, there was potentially another £600,000 in net revenue we believed we could generate from uh, choosing to remarket these units again. Uh, we have 52 reservations as of last week at Lincoln House, uh, which includes 11 exchange contracts, 22, uh, 26 sorry, have officially completed their purchase, and sales have started to pick up with five new reservations in the last few days. Um, we expect uh, strong sales to end the year. Uh, Bank Street and St Peter's gave these developments are fully sold with the exception of one unit at Bank Street. Um, and this is another factor in the impairment of these projects, as mentioned earlier. We we failed to benefit in a rise of property prices, which would have offset some of the increased costs on these developments had we delayed sales. Um, but of course, with, with the benefit of hindsight, uh, Oscar House has an agency agreement which has been signed, which uh, underwrites the full purchase of 6.1 million. And as mentioned earlier, the, the developments we haven't started to construction, we've not started sales. Um, our approach will likely be one more more cautious, uh, aiming to time marketing activity more effectively. Um, but overall, demand remains strong, uh, provides a reassuring indicator in our business model. Um, furthermore, a large proportion of our buyers are cash purchasers. Uh, so rising interest rates and current situation with lending has meant we've, we've mainly been affected by this. As already covered, um, Lincoln House is our first completed development which should generate 10 million pounds in net revenue for the group once fully sold. And the building prior to our purchase was a part built office building sat vacant for around uh, eight to nine years. Uh, we invested time to, to revise the planning application, uh, which resulted in 88 apartments, starting work in April uh, 2021 and completion this year in August. Um, and we're delighted to have signed an agreement with the uh, Bolton NHS um, Foundation Trust for 62 of the 88 apartments to house their workers, uh, which demonstrates the, the positive impact we've, we've had to the local area um, that were able to house key workers, providing 
quality accommodation. Um, this slide provides some context to the, the level of work that's been undertaken on the development. Um, over six million pounds been spent completing the project, which has seen the building completely transformed. Uh, additional works were required uh, to the roof and the whole cladding system was replaced to the building, as you can see on the top left image, uh, resulting in a full re-render, uh, adding time onto the programme. Uh, but essential improvements we, we needed to make. Um, these extra works and enhancements uh, meant we're EWS1 compliant, which, which isn't required, but future proofs are by buyers and improves lending potential. And the completed projects of high quality uh, reflects more of a city centre living feel. Specification has been to a, a good standard with antique co flooring throughout and carpets and bedrooms with, with bathrooms having a, a modern look. Uh, and overall, very impressed. Um, of course, lessons will, will take into future developments and expect to continue to enhance our products further for, for future schemes. Our property services, as mentioned earlier, has, has undergone significant changes, um, but these, this sees us generate income from five core areas. Firstly, the group provides property sourcing service. Um, this is primarily for co-living property, um, and we charge £5,000 each. Over the six months of this year, following this new fee structure, uh, source properties have been limited to, to four uh, mainly due to the time to purchase, but since the 30th of June, um, eight properties have been sourced, which has generated £40,000 in fees and a further 10 pending due to complete before the end of the year. Therefore, um, around £90,000 in fees expected in the six months to 31st of December from sourcing activity alone, which hopefully demonstrates the level of performance expected moving into next year. The purchases and subsequent sale of these properties are handled by our team and as a result we charge £1,500 per transaction. On all co-living properties under refurbishment we also charge 5% of the cost to enable us to provide construction services in-house. And as we have the other operational costs as part of the service agreement, um, we the agreement we signed with a related party, Robin Hood Property Development, the group also receives a £100,000 annual fee. And finally, of the completed residential properties we, we, uh, we build along with new co-living property, the group receives management fees for the ongoing services to landlords. Um, and we're pleased with the revised property services structure in place, which provides some diverse sources of revenue for the group. Um, I'm expecting further growth in property services as a result of more properties to manage and an increase in co-living activity in particular, um, but also as we establish the right processes and controls and eventually look to, to market and offer these ser services externally. Uh, I'm now going to hand over to Anthony to uh, run through the financial review. Thanks, Jason, and good afternoon, everyone. So I'd like to take you through the highlights of our financial performance for the year ended 30th of June 2022. Um, the financial results are the second full year of trading and continue to reflect the start of the journey for the group following full listing in December 2020. So first to look at the headline numbers. Group revenue was £1.7 million, which was 276% ahead of last year. The main contributor of revenue in the year was in-house construction activity, with 0.7 million pounds of income split across two key areas. Firstly, the refurbishment activity taking place within co-living, generating 0.5 million pounds from Robin Hood property development, converting purchased houses to houses of multiple occupancy prior to making the property available for letting. And secondly, work for One Heritage North Church Limited generated 0.1 million pounds. A further source of income was development management, which generated fees of £0.2 million in the period from agreements with One Heritage Tower and One Heritage North Church. Our property services revenue stream generated income of £0.2 million from management and transaction fees. And finally, within trading property revenue, the disposal of Nicholas Street developments generated £0.7 million of income. 
It was a loss at gross profit level of 0.7 million pounds. So gross profit was down 1.1 million year on year. And the gross margin was minus 40%, down 135% on what was achieved in FY21. As Jason just alluded to, our full year results have been impacted by some setbacks on Bank Street and St. Peter's Gate, where despite implementing mitigating strategies, originally anticipated costs have increased and construction delays have impacted overall returns, leading to, leading to an impairment write down of 1.3 million pounds. Operating loss was 2.1 million pounds, 170, 170% lower than last year. And operating margins were minus 121%, but up 48% on FY21. The operating loss figure includes administration expenses, which were up 0.5 million on FY21. With the key uplift coming from staff costs, where headcount increased from 11 to 23 in the year, to ensure the group is properly resourced to deliver controlled growth for the future. The group generated a pre-tax loss for the period of 2.1 million pounds, 164% down on prior year, and the loss per share was 6.6 .6 pence, 112% down on the 3.1 pence loss per share reported in FY21. So as the group commences the new financial year, there is a clear focus on the core operational areas, which Jason outlined, of developments, co-living and property services. Roles and responsibilities across the business are aligned to the sources of revenues and profits. And with a growing pipeline of developments and the strengthening of the teams to deliver, the group is in a strong position to achieve controlled growth and shareholder returns in the future. Turning now to our balance sheet, I'm going through some of the notable changes. The £66,000 decrease in non-current assets reflects the change in carrying amounts of property, plant and equipment assets. The cash and cash equivalents movement I'll cover in a moment. Inventory was £7.9 million higher than last year. This reflects our investment in the four developments due to practically complete in FY23. Lincoln House was £4.9 million higher in the year and is practically completed in August 2022. Oscar House, Bank Street and St Peter's Gate increased by £3.2 million by the year end and are expected to complete in half one 2023. Investments in associates increased by £50,000 in the year, this being the debtor following the sale of our 47% stake in One Heritage Complete Limited with payment received after year end. Financial assets at fair value through profit and loss relates to a profit participation loan with Robin Hood, which was cancelled in the year and fully repaid in line with the revised business strategy, reducing the balance by 0.4 million pounds. Trade and other receivables increased by 1.2 million pounds this predominantly relates to 0.8 million pounds of prepaid sales agent fees and commissions paid on units that have been exchanged but not yet completed in line with selling activity across Lincoln House, St. Peter's Gate, Bank Street and Oscar House developments. There's also an increase of 0.6 million pounds in trade receivables, mainly due from Robin Hood property development, and this was invoiced and paid post year end. Total borrowings increased by £10.3 million. The group is supported by construction loans, a corporate bond and a related party facility. So this increase is funding the inventory growth until our customers legally complete on their apartments, which will satisfy the finance, reduce inventory and also provide valuable working capital, helping to fund the next cycles of activity. Trade and other payables increased by £1.3 million. The group has received deposits and reservation fees from customers of a million pounds in relation to units that were exchanged but not yet legally complete. And a further £0.2 million relates to trade payables and accruals at the reporting date for services received during the period. 
So overall, net assets reduced by £2.1 million in the year and the net asset value share decreased by 6.6 pence in the period. And in summary, the balance sheet structure reflects the anticipated impacts of forward funding development projects with a combination of increased debt and equity instruments. Ahead of completing significant developments in the financial year that commenced on 1st of July 2022, the group increased its borrowing levels in accordance with the strategy adopted by the group, supported by focused equity placements where appropriate. As the group continues to progress and with development projects reaching completion and realising sales, the balance sheet will in due course reflect the positive cash impact of such transactions. Moving on now to our cash uh, flow slide. So this chart highlights the key cash requirements for delivering growth and the source of this funding. Taking you through some of the detail now, moving from left to right on the slide. We declared a pre-tax loss of £2.1 million in the year from operations, as outlined earlier on the performance slide. There was a positive £59,000 align adjustment on non-cash items, which was due mainly to depreciation and provision changes. Cash outflow for working capital was £7 million. The main movement in this category was an inventory increase of £6.4 million across the four key developments. And just as a reminder, Lincoln House is one of them, which practically completed in August 2022. And Bank Street, St. Peter's Gate and Oscar House are all expected to practically complete in H1 2023. Within the working capital category, debtors increased by £1.6 million relating to prepaid agent, agents fees and other receivable items. And also creditors increased by £1.1 million due to customer deposits and reservation fees received and other payable activities. So overall, this resulted in a net operating cash outflow for the period of £9 million. Financing cash inflow to fund this growth was £9.8 million in the period. Of this, £7.1 million was received from external borrowings and a further £4.6 million was utilised of the £7.5 million credit facility with the related party. Repayments of interest were made in the year of £1.1 million and £0.7 million of borrowings were also repaid in the period. The overall cash inflow for the year was £768,000. So for the final slide to summarise, the financial year to June 2022 saw a 276% increase in revenue to £1.7 million. Inventory on our four key developments increased and the closing balance was 15.1 million, ready to be unlocked in FY23 as we hand over finished apartments to customers. Net debt funded the growth in the business and was 15.1 million at the year end. The debt has come from a number of sources, including construction finance, related party loans and bond placements. As the developments practically complete, this allows for a significant reduction in gearing and the generation of working capital to fund future growth. So with a clear focus on the core operational areas of developments, co-living and property services, a growing pipeline of developments, the strengthening of the teams to deliver and continued committed support from our related party parent group, we are in a strong position to achieve controlled growth and deliver improved shareholder returns in the future. Thank you for listening. I'll now hand you back to Jason. Thank you, Anthony. Um, so this slide showcases some of the work we've been doing in relation to ESG. Uh, in November of last year, we announced nine commitments, which is published on our website within, um, with the ultimate goal of embedding ESG initiatives in, in both our day-to-day -day operations and across our developments. 
Um, and whilst there's ongoing work to assess environmental impacts and adjust the designs on our developments, we were able to make progress with our social impact in particular, uh, with charitable commitments. Uh, we offer employees two, day, two days paid leave uh, per year towards charity. Uh, I'm pleased to see contributions made to a variety of char charities, um, homelessness in, in Greater Manchester uh, being a particular focus. Um, several thousand pounds has also been raised and uh, our commitment to the cause uh, will be ongoing throughout next year. Uh, further steps have been taken um, and it's pleasing to have a seat at the table at several local business events on ESG, along with a voice to students on topics such as climate change and employment advice. Um, and I've been I've been proud of the contribution um, of our people and, and look forward to providing another another update next year. And there are four strategic priorities in place for the forthcoming period. Our development projects will continue to be a focus. Improvements are being made towards the effectiveness of delivery, including the team restructure and process enhancements. Our property, serve, our property sales are essential to the business to reinvest uh, and changes are being made that I outlined earlier. Uh, we've accepted mistakes uh, and where we have uh, uh, and where we have marketed and sold properties too soon. Um, uh, improvements are also being made to, to establish greater, uh, greater controls. I've been pleased with how property services has evolved um, and we'll have an ongoing focus on our revenue streams. And finally, development projects need to be replaced and a larger pipeline established as we grow as a business. Uh, and there will be greater emphasis on this as we start 2023, nearing completion of a further three development projects. Our outlook remains optimistic. Uh, there continues to be a chronic lack of supply of housing, particularly in the north of England. So despite rising costs, we believe we're well poised to deliver our strategy. Uh, we're expecting progress to be made with new acquisitions and growth across all areas of the business, including in property services. But conscious due to the level of uncertainty economically and more recent politically, uh, this may see some short term caution, but overall fully committed and confident in our business model. Thank you. And we'll now take some time to answer any questions. Jason, Anthony, if I may just jump back in there and thank you very much indeed for your presentation this afternoon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just by using the Q&A tab that's situated on the top right hand corner of your screen. Uh, but just while the team take a few moments to review those questions that were submitted already, I would like to remind you that recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Uh, Anthony, Jason, as you can see in the Q&A tab, we have received a number of questions for our today's presentation and thank you to everyone on the call for taking the time to submit their questions if i could please just hand back to you to address those where it's appropriate to do so and then i'll pick up from you at the end thank you are you on mute anthony i knew it was going to happen at one stage yeah we've got a pre uh pre-prepared question which came in before the presentation uh, so if, if I take that one uh, and the question was on what basis were the impairment charges calculated so as I mentioned and Jason mentioned uh, we have had some um, issues on two of our sites and we had to take a 1.3 million impairment or, or right down um, to losses on, on these two sites so a bit of background here um, without getting too technical, uh, the inventory value on the balance sheet should be measured at the lower of cost or the net realizable value. So the lower of well, the cost or what we expect to receive from customers in totality. Now, on, on performing a detailed analysis of all our development projects and looking at the cost to complete, so how much more we needed to spend to get these uh, apartment uh, blocks to practical completion. Um, it was obtained that the sum of cost to date and cost to complete uh, are higher than the income to be ob obtained upon completion. So the Bank Street development has experienced significant delays and unforeseen costs due to the non-performance and subsequent liquidation of the previous contractor. And this coupled with the increasing in rising material costs created a significant 
increasing total cost to complete for the development. And the St. Peter's Gate development has experienced the same setbacks as those at Bank Street on rising material cost. So accordingly, as the net realizable value of the Bank Street and St. Peter's Gate developments were deemed to be lower than the costs, uh, the, was, there was an impairment write-off to bring costs in line with what we'll receive from customers. Um, so that is the basis for impairment and a bit more detail uh, just to cover off again what is a significant number on the, uh, on the profit and loss. Okay, um, we've got a question here, when and how many acquisitions do you expect next year? Um, so a difficult question to provide a specific answer, but uh, what we do know is we will need to replace the developments that are nearing completion currently, um, but with what and uh, when will require further consideration. Um, we're cautious considering that land demand continues to outstrip supply. Uh, sites are slow to come through the planning system, um, which we've experienced ourselves with every planning application over the last two years. Uh, and construction prices are currently at an all-time high. Um, we are though confident in, in our strategy, um, still seeing good opportunities, especially in regional towns and, and cities across the north, um, but not ignoring the fact that the current market and economic environment does cause some constraints for us, which, which we're adapting to. Um, so unsure what and how many acquisitions, um, but we are doing what we what we can to find new opportunities and, and, and projects with, with value. Looking down the questions, there's a couple of similar questions come from um, different people on this uh, webinar. Um, one from Rachel and one from Luke. And uh, if I read what Rachel's asked, I think it covers off what Luke's has asked as well, uh, which is, hello and thank you for your very useful updates. Would you be able to tell me if you believe that house prices uh, are going to fall in the UK and what mitigations One Heritage have in place? So I think a bit of background on this first, uh, the Halifax reported price increases of 13% year on year in June, but reported 9.9% increase in September so already in September, we could see that there is a slowdown in the rate that prices are increasing. Um, now, as for the future, there are very wide variations amongst economists on what will happen given uh, imponderables. And I can name three of them imponderables. One being, will there be a recession and for how long? What will the impact on unemployment be? And will inflation be persistent? Now this week, on Thursday, I think it was, Lloyds Bank said it expected prices to fall around 8% over the UK next year. Um, Zoopla came out and they said they believe the future will depend on mortgage rates next year. So if mortgage rates hang around the 4% level next year, there'll be relatively uh, little impact in the market. If rates of 5% uh, rates of 5 across next year, could lead to falls in London and the South East, but the rest of the country should be okay. The pinch point seems to be if mortgage rates get to 6% plus, uh, there could be an impact uh, on, on house prices. So obviously the actions that the government and the Bank of England are gonna take over the next weeks are gonna be critical for getting the economy under control. Now, as for One Heritage, Whilst we're not immune to the turbulence and weaknesses in the UK economy, we are offered some protection with overseas buyers who can take advantage of what is a relatively weak pound. Uh, many of these buyers are cash purchasers and this coupled with very strong rental performance. Uh, we believe that One Heritage can remain agile and adapt its strategy accordingly, depending on what happens in the wider economy. I've got a question here. Uh, why have you decided to move into new build housing with your uh, acquisition recently? Um, to be honest, we, we were not actively looking at new build housing, but presented with a, an opportunity which was the right size and, and price for us. Um, the slides located close to a, a 
Barrett and, and keep new build housing development, um, which demonstrates demand. Um, good size at 24 houses, um, and the area was the right area, being in, being in West Yorkshire, um, with high demand for, for housing. Um, but also the, the risk profile for new build housing is different to our development projects. Um, they allow you to, to build them in phases, which gives us some greater flexibility. Um, this reduces the reliance on um, significant amounts of finance if we choose. Um, and in the event um, material prices continue to increase even further, um, we can adjust our approach to delivery uh, without impacting the whole development, which it, which it would on our other development projects. Um, it's a project which, which is different, um, offers us some diversification across our portfolio. Um, and I'll be providing regular updates on, on progress. A question um, from Emily L, um, which is for the projects to be completed in the first half of this year, are the net revenues a good indicator of the contribution to the top line? Um, but the simple answer is, is yes. Um, obviously be careful because some of the net revenues uh, presented earlier were just on reserved uh, reserved units um, but yeah the, the the net revenues disclosed on the total units uh, both achieved and unsold are, are a good indicator of, of what the sales line will, will be i've got a question from luke p in relation to lincoln house um, Lincoln House is finished and it's referenced their 52 reservations as of 5th of October. How many completions have there been to date? Uh, do you have a time frame for the disposal of the remaining units? So uh, I think I covered this in, in the presentation. Um, got 26 uh, completions, um, 11 have exchanged, which are due to complete um, over the next few, few weeks. Um, so we've got at least 37, or we should have at least 37 legal completions um shortly um and we're hopeful with of the full 57 uh, by by the end of the year um sales have picked up in in the last few weeks um or the last few days in particular with with five new sales um i think what we're seeing is the the week of sterling and a, a few of the changes has increased the attractiveness for, for for uk property um it's now a completed development fully tenanted with a a strong tenant having bolton nhs Foundation Trust takes 62 of the 88 apartments for the next uh, 12 months at least, but hopeful for a, a more of a longer term contract with them. Um, so an attractive prospect, which we're remaining confident of. A question from Keith, Keith C. Um, you mentioned 6 million spent on Bolton. Does that mean that there is a circa gross profit of 4 million in this half year? I think the simple answer there is uh, the money that we've spent in the financial year to June 22, um, plus what we spent on the site in 23 and what we spent before 22 um, will be the, uh, the, the end cost position. What is unclear yet is what the net revenue figure is going to be for, for, the, for that development, because we've still got a number of, a number of unsold units. So, um, at this moment in time, it's it, it's a projection based on what we think things will be sold for. Um, we do expect to make a profit on that development, um, and I'm sure we'll be talking more about that in the interims. And I'm looking forward to talking about it this time next year. I've got a question from Sam. Uh, when do you expect to receive planning approval for Seaton House in, in Stockport? Um, so we know there's a couple of meetings planned uh, for December, which we're hopeful of positive responses. Um, I think the first is the area committee and second, the transport and highways committee. Um, we've had all consultee responses, um, but awaiting final confirmation of committee dates. Um, but, you know, what we've seen with, with uh, other developments is delays across the, the planning process in, in general. Um, we remain confident of December, but um, may slip into um, the first quarter of, uh, of next year. Um, we've also got another question from, from Sam. Uh, would you continue to focus on the north uh, or would you consider expanding into new areas in, in the UK? Um, so our geographical focus 
probably will continue to, to be the north of England, um, towns and, and cities are, across the north. Um, obviously with, with high demand from working professionals and, and good transport links. But um, the focus tends to be um, areas with similar characteristics in terms of values and expected economic growth. Um, this is seen as look at some areas of the Midlands, um, which you know we, we, we may consider, um, but we're based in Manchester, we, we know the market in the north will we'll continue to, to specialize in here um, but you know we can't rule out uh, looking at, at new areas so it remains under consideration but short term i think the the north will will be our priority yeah question from luke uh, what profits on cost percent can you expect for lincoln house oscar house is due to complete in 2023 can you give a rough profit on cost percentage um, I can get an answer similar to uh, what I just gave Keith uh, Keith C. Definitely looking forward to um, telling you what profits and margins were made on these developments th this time next year. Um, really difficult to pin down numbers at the moment with units still left to sell. So there's still quite a bit of uncertainty and we don't know what's going to happen in, in the wider economy. So um it will be very dangerous for me to mention any numbers at this stage. Uh, but yes, looking forward to discussing it this time next year. I've got a question from Claire. How are you managing to attract talent to the business with all UK businesses struggling to hire good people? Um, good good question. Um, I think the the culture within the business is, is, is really important to us. Um, uh, we have a specific emphasis on bringing the right type of person into the business, um, you know, eager um, uh, with a kind of clear career path. You know, we're, we're, we're big supporters of um, professional development uh, with a, a large proportion of our staff studying um, uh, professional qualifications um, within the finance team and, and development team in, in particular with staff within property services um, studying in ARLA, ARMA, um, property mark qualifications, et cetera. Um, but, you know, we're, we're still an um, enthusiastic business. Um, our turnover of staff is relatively, relatively low. Um, you know, we've seen to attract some good, good talent with uh, obviously Anthony uh, being a perfect example this year and a number of good senior hires across the development team. Um, and we're continuing to monitor the, the market to attract new talent over the next 12 months in particular to uh, um, refine the, the structure and, and, and dynamic team we, we already have in place. Yeah, I think we've got a, a, a final question from Keith C. Um, building on his earlier question, um, when all sold, if at the 10 million GDV at Lincoln, will the gross profit be 4 million? Uh, given the rental income on unsold units will cover ongoing residual borrowings um, again without sounding like a politician um, we need to get to the end of the project have a look at all the costs that have been involved in getting us where we need to be uh, including any further costs that may be necessary to uh, deliver a hundred percent of sales and then i'm very much looking forward to announcing um, what what level of profit we've made on that development Jason, and if I may just jump back in there and thank you very much indeed for taking, uh, for being so generous of your time there and addressing all of those questions that came in from investors this afternoon. And of course, if there are any further questions that do come through, we'll make these available to you immediately after the presentation has ended for you to review and then add any additional responses where it's appropriate to do so. Uh, Jason, perhaps before redirecting those on the call to provide you of their feedback, which I know is particularly important to yourself and the company, if I could please just ask you for a few closing comments to wrap up with, that would be great. Yeah, so thank you for attending our annual results presentation this afternoon. I uh, hope the insight into the business uh, and updates on progress is useful. Uh, important to know the whole industry is facing challenges at the moment, most notably cost pressures, which uh, we're hopeful to see in signs as uh, it leaves over the forthcoming period, but does mean we, we will need to be cautious. Uh, but despite these challenges, we remain confident in our business model and strategy. Uh, we reached a significant milestone this year, completing our first development, and good progress has been made across the whole business um, with strong foundations in place, which should contribute towards further growth. 
Um, housing continues to be an undersupply. Uh, demand remains high from, from both buyers and, and tenants for our property. And this bodes well for the future. Um, and I hope to provide a positive update in our interim results uh, early next year. Uh, thank you again and uh, have a good evening. Jason, that's great. And Anthony as well, thank you once again for taking the time to update investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This won't take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of One Heritage Group PLC, we would like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That now concludes today's session, so good afternoon to you all.